Okay, um, I'm going to do some work now on the um, the ball and nut. Now, I think in um, one of the videos, earlier videos, I said to you that uh, I, I mentioned about taking this ball and nut off the um, the screw, and uh, it's it's a bit fiddly. But if you have the right equipment, uh, it's relatively easy to do. And that piece of equipment, I just machined out of a, a solid bar of uh, plastic, uh, in my case, Polystone, Polystone 7000. Uh, nearly Teflon, but you don't have to use that. It just needs to be something with a little bit of give. Metal isn't any good. And I do know that if you order a new ball nut, it comes uh, with a plas uh, oh, sorry, plastic, a, a cardboard tube. However, if you want something that you can use consistently, so what you need to do all right, to get the correct size, and in this case, incidentally, this is the ball and nut from my CNC rotor machine, the, the uh, X axes, which um, played up or oh, about a Oh, nearly two years ago now. Uh, it's a bit lumpy and they actually sent me through another one. So, what you do, you measure your ball screw, uh, in this case they're 16 mil, and then you measure in the bottom of the threaded part and it's pretty well 14 mil. And so this outside diameter needs to be 14 mil. And in my case, with this, 12 mil on the inside, so it slips on like so. So what happens is, uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but we should put that on there like that. Um, I shall rest that there like that. I'll zoom you in so you can see. So what you do, you place this on here. Uh, and you want somewhere for the ball bearings to run on and not drop out. So it's this sort of action. You sort of firmly hold it in the middle there like that. And you wind this off. Wind this off like so. And keep going all the way. Until it comes. Completely. Off. Like so. So now the, the balls are actually still kept in the race inside here. Okay, and then you can carefully turn it over, line it back up like so. And then wind it back on. like so, without losing any balls, and um, yeah, everything's fine. So that's the way to do it, uh, that's the easiest way I, I know of, so it's just a little bit of plastic. Um, very very thin wall, so you've got to be careful making it, but you can use this repetitively with this size of ball and nut. So there you go, easy process.
now we're up to the point where we need to measure the length of screw that we require. Uh, so I've still got the spring uh, return mechanism connected on the other side. Uh, and that's as far as it'll allow to go down. I will, at a later date, either lengthen the slide or even put a gas strut on it or something like that. But I want the ability for this head to come down another 50 millimeter. So I'll probably, actually, I'll allow myself enough thread to come all the way down to near touching this boss here which I think is 75 mil. Um, and you'll notice too that the line of this screw is pretty well in line with this corner edge here. So it's not all the way around. Uh, I sort of, um, I was looking at it and I thought, well, there's probably no, no great need to take it all the way around there. So I sort of gone halfway. I need the screw to be uh, factoring in a, a block down here too with the bottom bearing, I am going to cut that screw off at 390. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make it 400 and if I had to trim it back a little bit more I will. Okay, so I've marked the um, ball screw exactly at uh, 400 where I want to cut it off. Now then, if ever you need to cut one of these, they are extremely uh, hard material on the outside. The central core is a lot softer, but you need a slitting saw like this. This is one millimeter, okay? And um, so why you need a, 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 a slitting saw like this, or slit, not slitting saw, but slitting disc, or cutting fine cutting disc, is because it doesn't build up as much heat into the material. You, you know, you really don't want to let this thing go blue or anything like that. So this is what I advise to cut with. So we'll just cut through this now. I'll just bring it around here so you can see the end of that. You'll notice at the end of it um, it's still quite metal looking and it's only just on the very very tip there um, let me get it up here it's only on the very very tip there that uh, it starts to blue with heat a little bit and you know that that's fine just that little bit because what I'm going to do now in the lathe is I'm going to machine this bit off so it, uh, you know, that bit's going to go away. So that's how to cut one of these off gently, gently, uh, with a very fine slitting disc. Okay, so there you go. There's the end of it turned down for that bearing to go on, uh, if we decide it's uh, necessary to, to use. Got the ball screw bolted on here. I've got these drilled out. Oop. I've got these drilled out. But of course, I don't want to drill this boss out yet until I've got all this offered up. So I suppose it's crunch time now to see if everything lines up. It should do. Uh, there shouldn't be any reason why it um, shouldn't line up and be perfect. I get myself organised here. Put this up through here. That fits into that ball there. Very nicely. Then next bearing. It's in three parts. That goes in. Spacer and centralizing thing. The spacer goes on there, and the two nuts. Oh. This isn't like going on first for some reason. Just mucking him somewhere. So what I do to adjust these up is, if you hold the, uh, the ball screw, 
Okay. Um, do it with your fingers. Put it well as tight as you can with your fingers. You don't want to go any tighter than that. Move on that way down. Then all you do is lock these two nuts up against each other. So you hold the bottom one and pull the top one into it. Make that nice and firm like that. Make sure it's not binding. Make sure it's all tightened up. I've got to tighten this one up a bit. Get in there. So I've actually offset this slightly so you can get in there and tighten it up even with the ball screw in there. That's nice and tight. And tight. Don't over tighten them. They're just going to be um, really nice. And... Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that is a nice. I'm going to swing this round and get some light on it and let you have a look at. This. Okay. Look at the alignment here. That's not. That's not actually attached to there yet. Attached to there yet. That is perfect. There's, there's actually... <laughs> there's next to zero gap. I am so pleased with that. So I'm just marking these now, really. I want to take it off from there and, and uh, actually do it on the drill press. Okay, so this is the... Um the z-axis going together. Here's the, I've just finished this. I just um, drilled and tapped all these all the way through. So now we'll put it together. So yeah, this is our big bolt that goes through from the other side. I've actually found, uh, I think it'll be easier as far as the Z axis is concerned to put the zero backlash coupling on first and then pop the housing on I think. Well that fits okay. 